Welcome to the Sons of Mjolnir podcast. The Sons of... What? This isn't your Sons of Macaroni, yeah! The Sons of Mjol... Mjolnir? This is the Sons of Mjolnir, yeah, yeah, yeah! Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of the Sons of Mjolnir. As always, I am one of your hosts, Fat Thor. Unfortunately, Gorgon and Cap are off saving the world today, but I am joined by two very special guests that I am so excited to talk to today. You may know them from such works as The Worst Dudes, Commuters, Maledictions of Maxwell uh, Fist, Fitzsimmons, I hope I'm saying that right, also Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Rick and Morty, and together they have both done a book called Ancient Noise, and then also Taft Sturgeon, which is now coming out with a new graphic novel, 140 pages, it's a fat boy of Taft Sturgeon Holiday in the Stars. And that's what we're here to talk about today. I am joined by the wonderful Dave Crispino and Tony Gregori. Guys, thank you so much for joining me today. Thanks for having us. Yeah, thanks for having us, TJ. Of course, of course. Like I said, I'm super excited to get into these books with you. Super excited to talk to you. I've been doing my research on you, and you guys are both super interesting dudes. That's maybe two of us. (laughs) I mean... (laughs) But before we get into the nitty gritties of Taft and Taft Sturgeon, all your guys' work, something we typically do here on the show is your kind of comic origin story, something I'm sure that you guys have both done plenty of times before. So, Dave, I want to start off with you really quickly. So you have said that you were a longtime reader of comics, actually learned to read from uh, comics. You'd go with your dad to Price Club, get a big bag of comics. That was kind of like a bonding experience for you guys. And then you fell out of it, got back in during like Earth X and Kingdom Come, which are both like really big kind of epic storylines. So getting back into comics at that time, I'm sure was like mind blowing. But what I'm very curious about is so after you, you know, have this love of comics, you actually started running your own store. And then you are also a manager at the Collector's Corner out in Baltimore. So I'm very curious. I feel like for a lot of people that start writing and like get into comic writing, you know, obviously it's something that you always had a love for comics and stuff. But I feel like being a retailer, you have a very specific outlook on not only comics, but you also have a kind of outlook of, you know, how the sausage is made kind of the business of comics. So I'm curious, what was that spark to really throw your hat in the ring not only understanding comic books but the business behind comic books i wanted to know more that's first and foremost like i wanted i as you said like how the sausage is made like i wanted to know like all the steps and how to how to make a comic book on the creative side and because dealing with publishers and distributors like you know it's all numbers it's all sales it's all hey 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 will you buy this will you buy this will you buy this hey 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 this this variant's coming out um it's it's very like how to get the retailer to purchase the most comics because uh, first and foremost like as a retailer like uh i think most cost customers and maybe creatives don't understand that like we foot the bill like already like there's no return policies i mean since i've been out of the game there may have been there there's probably like a couple return policies but mostly if it's like if the books are damaged or lost or whatever that's the only time that we could probably get our money back from the publishers or the distributors Mm -hmm. but most of the time yes like those hundreds and hundreds of books and titles that you see like retailers foot that that bill like we we take a chance so basically like i've learned to take a chance not only with others but myself Mm -hmm. and so getting into comics and wanting or getting into the creative side of comics and wanting to do that i've always had like I've always wanted to express my feelings about art. Like I always wanted to have, like, just make art. I wanted to make art. Mm -hmm. I used to draw, I wrote poetry, like all these types of things. I love stories. I love storytelling. Um, I like it from a, you know, a shamanistic point of view. I like it from a point of aspiration. Like I like that you can inspire people. I like that you can move people emotionally and like, I, I just, and share your points of view whatever they may be um and comics as a medium i think is one of the best ways of storytelling to show people 
a, either a good time, a bad time or everything in between. Does that answer your question? Oh, absolutely. Know. Answers it beautifully. Yeah. And I love that answer too, because I think you can really see that in your work, especially in Taft. Like we're, we'll get into that. I have some questions about the whole world building process of Taft, Hell but yeah. you definitely get that, like you said, sense of there's personal story in there and there's, you know, real experience coming through in the book. And I think that's, you know, one of the reasons that Taft works so well. And a lot of that comes from this guy right here, Tony's incredible art to bring it to life. And so Tony, we'll switch it over to you really quickly. So you're kind of comic origin, very similar. You, you also talked about how you grew up, you know, reading comics. You actually drew your own dinosaur comic, which I thought was super cool. I would love to see some of those pages. <laughs> uh, you talked about how your dad taught you to read with early, uh, late 70s, early 80s Batman books. And, you know, it, throughout high school, you, you know, would draw, you always had this love of comics, but then after high school, you kind of find yourself in flux and you're uh, bartending out in Florida and you actually had a partner of yours that kind of got you creatively thinking again, as you put it. Wow. Really and so, <laughs> yeah, man, he's, he's, uh, he's done it all. <laughs> hey, well. See, this is the thing, though. Again, like I said, you guys have probably told these stories a hundred times, right? So I don't want to make you guys come and recount your the same thing you've said a million times, right? So yeah, I want to make cool. sure I do my research and, you know, know at least a little bit about you guys. But yeah. my question on top of that, so I thought that was very interesting. You guys both kind of got out of the medium and came back into it. And so for Tony, I kind of have a, a similar question for you. Uh, we've touched on with other creators like, the idea of I think a lot of people looking um, from the outside looking into comics don't really see what it takes to either break into comics and stay in comics mm -hmm. and you know they see like an artist like oh this guy drew Green Lantern like he's you know huge or whatever but they don't yeah. see the steps that it takes to get there so I'm curious with your kind of like I said after high school you're kind of in flux and you kind of had this resurgence of creativity to kind of bring you back Similar to uh, Dave's question, what was it like? Like, what was that spark to really get you into the game and not only in the game, but to stay in the game? Because like we were talking about a little bit quickly before we started recording, you moved around quite a lot from Florida to Colorado to San Diego. So like I said, what is it like not only getting that spark to get into the game, but staying in the game that long? Hmm. Yeah. Uh, the spark initially, I mean, I've always wanted to, do comics even when I was a kid mm -hmm. but you know growing up you know I'm uh I was born in 76 so like there was no internet and I didn't know how you would ever get to become a comic artist I didn't know if that was possible mm -hmm. you just sent like hard copies off to editors in vanilla envelope vanilla envelopes and you know hopefully you hear back you know yeah uh, just, and that oh, just seems please, please. <laughs> yeah yeah this just seems so like uh far away from from possible so mm -hmm. but um but yeah, that was the only thing I was ever really good at was was drawing. It just came to me naturally. Mm -hmm. uh, I just love doing it. Like it's the one thing I can do where I just lose myself for hours and I don't think about you know the world or my problems or you know I I can focus on that because I care about it. I've always had that type of personality. If I'm not really like passionate or invested, mm -hmm. uh, I have a hard time staying focused and like you know really seeing things to fruition. <laughs> yeah. So we call that ADHD now. Yeah. I so say yeah, getting yeah. to the finish line. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. My dad would just be like, get your shit together. That's what he would say. Yeah. <laughs> get but your yeah, shit so, together uh, disorder. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, so uh, it was just that. It was just that the love of drawing. And when I was like you had said, I was, I was bartending and uh, I wanted to, a future. I wanted some, to do something else in my life and I want to have some sort of purpose or meaning. And the only thing I really could think about was art The I love to do. Mm -hmm. I didn't initially say I was going to draw comics. When I went to art school, I studied 2D animation for a couple of years. So I was like thinking I was going to be the animator. Mm -hmm. But that was right in like 2005, 2006, where everything really went towards computer animation and 2D animation went out the window. And I'm sitting there thinking like, well, what, what am I going to do with like these run cycles and these, you know, <laughs> of this anatomy and you know dynamic movement i'm trying i've been learning what am i going to do with it yeah. and uh, i was like well why don't i try drawing comics just for the hell of it and i started drawing comics with my friends uh with my partner at the time's brother he was a writer and we made a comic and it, and it got picked up by an independent publisher and then it kind of started from there mm -hmm. and it's just to stay in the game it was like kind of like 
I didn't really like what I was already working. Like people said they have a fallback plan or plan B. I was already doing my plan B. So like that was my life. So it wasn't like, uh, you know, oh, uh, I'm an 8, 19, 20 year old going to try this. But if it doesn't work out, I'll go sell insurance or something. Mm -hmm. I was already doing the thing. And I figured I'm just going to go invest everything into this comics th game and uh, kind of made it my whole focus and my whole like purpose to wake it up in the morning. Yeah, you really just kind of lit the fire under you and were like, like yeah. you said, I mean, I'm already doing the, you know, nine yeah. to five stuff. Well, so why the hell well, not? It was like nine to five at night, you know? So it yeah. was like, <laughs> but it, it was like, yeah, I was, I, I knew what I wanted to do. And then I started drawing again. I got the bug and then I would go into work at my bar shift and I'd just be thinking about drawing the whole time and being miserable. Yeah. At, you know, having to wait on people <laughs> and just think about ideas and things I want to do and be like, God, I don't want to deal with this drunk idiot or this yep. person or i don't want to do this i want to go home and draw and so once that the opportunity came to do it full time which was like over a decade ago it's been about 11 or 12 years i've been doing this full time now mm -hmm. i i just was like i'm never gonna i'm gonna take advantage of this and just go full speed and not like ever at least if i fail it's gonna be because you know it wasn't because i didn't try hard or i didn't yeah. like give it my all you know mm -hmm. and i didn't man, want to I... think of I love that so much. And again, I think it's just a very good insight to people from the outside looking in, you know, like what that journey is like. And I love too how for both of you, like I said before, you kind of fell out of comics, but something in the stars, it was in it for you guys. And it kind of, you know, kept circling back around. And I think that also translates to you two as a partnership as well, how you guys have talked about you guys were kind of in each other's orbits for a while until you actually met each other. So you guys met through, uh, I for, I excuse me, I'm forgetting your last name, but Layla, the writer for Shudder. Uh, artist. artist. Artist for Shudder. Layla yeah. Del Duca. Yeah. Del Layla, Duca. Layla lived here in Missoula uh, at the time and mm -hmm. we had become friends and she had met David on a, in, at a convention in uh, Baltimore or Boston. I think I met her in New York City. New York City. Nope. I think Wait, I met her at New York Comic there. Con when she was out there with with Joe for signing. Yeah, she and hit they, me up yeah. one day and was like, "Hey, I got a friend. You want? I want to introduce you to. He's a writer. He's looking for artists." I'm like, "Oh, what's this guy's deal?" And I look up, I'm like, "Oh, he's he's a nice Italian boy. <laughs> nice handsome Italian boy. I yeah. can work with him. <laughs> That's Beautiful awesome. Blonde head, just like me. Yeah, and like <laughs> I said, I feel like again with your guys's you know both love of comics career and comics and your guys partnership together it seems like it was all kind of written in the stars it was kind of meant to happen and i think again that all kind of translates into your guys's work so then you got your first book together was ancient noise correct mm, no long form yes long, yeah, long form, but, but actually, as far as it was adversary right? yeah we did the adversary which was like okay. our sword and sorcery and then mm -hmm. we did malediction of maxwell fitzsimmons okay okay so those two were first and then that came yeah. ancient noise yeah yeah from working on those couple projects together obviously it seems like taft was like your guys is real like hitting your stride right like with the story and like with the idea and again i really love the world that you guys created with Taft, uh, Taft Sturgeon, if you would, and you guys have described him as a love letter to John Candy, Buck Rogers, and it basically follows a intergalactic space cop or social worker, and he's like uh, uncovering this child uh, uh, trafficking ring. And yeah, the first one, yeah. Yeah, so this, I'm talking, the first one, before we get to the holiday special. Sure. Sorry, I should have prefaced that. Yeah, no, so, not, yeah. So this, it started off as a one shot and this was all the way back in 2016. So I'm very curious. Again, you guys talked about John Candy. You guys talked about wanting to get back to your roots in comedy specifically, like uh, I think as Tony put it, earnest comedy and something that subverts expectations. So I'm curious. So you have the idea for this character, like how you want him to be right. So wh what, was the process like of oh let's put him in space or and then like building that world and then so obviously for dave you know the writing aspect of it crafting this and then tony like how was it you know bringing that to life and again specifically like taft as a character like his look his personality i think it just very unique and something that you don't really see very often especially in like a space adventure book <laughs> yeah i think uh, visually I think uh, I, at the time I was I was telling Dave I want to do like a '70s style sci-fi thing, like a Logan's Run or mm -hmm. or Sleepers or something. 
and uh and also I, uh, like i was also reading calvin and Hobbes a lot at the time which you know kind of go through cycles of that you know mm -hmm. and space man spiff was right there if you look at like the first half this his ship that he has it's kind of a uh, i kind of ripped off the space man spiff uh spaceship that he zooms around in on the comic strips i kind of ripped that off a little bit mm -hmm. for, his, uh, for his little flying car thing yeah i um, can see that yeah so that was kind of the thing and then you know the his visually i was just trying to do a cartoony uh version like a more a little more athletic version of john candy you know mm -hmm. someone like some a husky boy but someone that if you saw him like doing some action it's believable and it's not like you know mm-hmm I don't yeah. want to make a joke of like having a, an obese man running around doing stuff because that <laughs> could seem like you're making fun of the guy, you know, and I don't yeah. want to do that. So. Well, that's what I really love about the character of Taft. And I, you just said it perfectly. I love, you know, some good Husky boy representation, my man. I love that you guys <laughs> went that route with it. But what I really love about it is like, we, so we're talking about this. The book is kind of comedy driven. I wouldn't say it's necessarily pure comedy, but it definitely has that undertone to it. But what I love is that the comedy doesn't come from Taft, like being a bigger guy or, you know, whatever. Like he no. is 100 percent taken seriously by like his coworkers, like people look up to him. And the comedy comes from situations as opposed to like, oh, look at, you know, fat cop guy. Right. And I think that was really both smart. It was well done, and I think it goes to what you guys are talking about, kind of subverting those expectations, and that's something that I really appreciate about the book. So, Dave, like I was talking about, what was it, why did you choose to write Taft the way that you did? Because I'm sure, I, like we were just talking about, you know, space adventure, space cop, I'm sure it's very easy to kind of just visualize your typical, I don't know, john mcclain or you know you kind of you know beefy cop grizzled kind of guy but tav is very he's earnest he's nice he's a good he's got a good heart so what what made you decide to go that route with your protagonist for this for this book i think it's my affinity for big men i just like big men um my Love dad it, baby it, i mean it's probably <laughs> i it probably has everything to do with my dad um my dad was was six four three hundred plus um, you know, and when Tony's talking about like 1970s and you start looking at like older pictures of John Candy in that era, older, I look at like older pictures of my dad, like my dad was an athlete, but, but he was a, he was a big man. Like, mm -hmm. you know, he would crush a ball in baseball. He would flatten people in football. And then like you watch SCTV skits of like John Candy, like he was the big man who just like, he was it was situational, but also like anything that was that he would do physical, it wasn't like a gag that he was like obese or like mm -hmm. clumsy or anything like that. It was just like he was strong or he was like just took up space. And then one of the things was like things like who is Harry Crumb is uh is one of the like the the top, I guess the top in like uh what is it? Not inspiration, but like what what am I what is my word yeah inspirations one of my like character tapestries like because in that whole movie he's doing like weird backflips and he's talking about <laughs> like having a black belt in the keto and the boots to match and like all that kind of crap and it's like it's funny and people do take him seriously but yeah I think it's just having the affinity for big men and like looking at people like Santa Claus looking at people like my father um looking at people like John Candy and any other like just john goodman like mm -hmm. just folks who are capable human beings but yeah. are larger than life and i wanted to like and especially in a in a heroic aspect i wanted i had the intent of like putting you the reader in a position of like of, of almost childlike like looking at a larger than life human being who can do the things that you can't whether it's like emotionally physically or whatever but he's there to protect you mm -hmm. and like he's there to show you how to be a good person and i mean that lends itself to like the whole santa claus mythos and like that kind of stuff which is why i think that it dovetailed so well for us to do taft sturgeon holiday like a taft sturgeon holiday special because you know he's there to tuck you in at night he's there to help you find you know your lost your lost animal or like 
help you work out why you were frustrated in school or like as an adult, like help you find out like why you were frustrated at work or like find your lost kid, like who may have been taken by a space pirate. But like, <laughs> as far <laughs> as far as like, you know, extra extraterrestrial and like space adventure, I mean, it, it also lends to that theme of like the unknown is just like, there's a whole wide you know, series of worlds, not just one world. And there's an individual here who, who has your best interests, much like Superman, who's like, I'm here to help. Like, I'm here to be there for you. And if I can't be there for you, like, he's going to be sad about it, of course, but he's going to do everything in his power. And you're going to know that he's doing everything in his power. And you're going to hope that like, he's inspired enough people to do everything in their power to do what's right and what's good and what's helpful. Mm -hmm. oh man i love that so much and again like going back to the i feel like you know with these kind of stories very stereotypical you know grizzle oh i'm too i'm too old for this shit kind of you know cop and stuff like that i i find it so refreshing getting a nice wholesome character like you said someone who's just good wants to do good i think on like for whatever reason in the past couple of years especially with you know the kind of drama or crime stories it's very much more serious. And like, again, the main character is very serious, stoic. So I really love the take that you did with it. And I think it makes the story more impactful. And again, that might just be me because I'm a I'm a, a Husky guy myself. I'm from uh, Chicago. So John Candy is beautiful, special, near and dear to my heart. So as soon as I heard you guys throw out that reference, Uncle Buck uh, and Buck Rogers, I was like, oh, I am sold 100%. I love this. But going back, you brought this up perfectly in your answer, and this is something that I am just endlessly curious about. This could be a whole other episode of conversation, I think. But the world in which you guys have crafted for TAP. So like we talked about, the 2016 one-shot, that kind of introduced us to this world, and now we're kind of dig digging a little deeper with this holiday special. And which, that's a whole other question, your, you know, Christmas mythology. But... I'm curious, again, going back to like crafting this world and like this universe and things like incubation cities and like how this whole space universe works for you guys. I'm curious, again, what was the process like of crafting? Like, I'm sure, you know, you have your typical inspirations of Star Wars, Star Trek, you know, stuff like that, but crafting it in a way to make it yours and make it unique. And then, you know, flipping on that same question, Tony, uh, similarly, like, bringing that to life visually aliens mobius <laughs> Mobi mobius i think mobius is like one of the is a big influence and jack kirby is a big influence i think mm -hmm. having i think jack kirby is like a huge influence on this world and like um jimmy george the individual who i, I work with closely and who has edited some of our books like uh and just we just talk all the time but it's just like one of those things where it's like follow the fun and it's like mm -hmm in this world, in this tapestry that we've created in this, in this kingdom, when this, whatever, mm -hmm. um, you know, we just wanted to follow the fun and like, again, follow that large sort of larger than life themes. And I think that's why, you know, in, in the, in the holiday, in the holiday special and in the 2016 one shot, there are these like larger than life constructions and like, like just sheer mass and entities that can like exist that are again larger than life mm -hmm. because of like the very little things that we understand as human beings on earth now so i just yeah so when talking with tony about this kind of stuff it's just like let's just like get big and weird get big and weird and let's like, get weird baby i love it yeah yeah and jack kirby and and mobius are like two people who have no problem getting big and weird mm -hmm. and and that's and that's i think where I was drawing things from Tony may have a different answer. <laughs> yeah. I say Tony, I mean, again, going off the whole world building thing. So what you get the script, right. And I mean, I'm sure it said something probably a little bit more elegant than how I'll put it, but it says like, you know, planet is a giant baby. So like, well, how do you start? How do you even begin to I like, think it was more elegant than that. that. <laughs> giant cosmic uh, space baby yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Space, that was it. cosmic space baby <laughs> yeah. that was like the the, the the structures are built on it and mm -hmm. uh, yeah I, I, and i kind of was like all right i get the gist of this um i think uh, david mentioned it's somewhere else it was like a 2001 space odyssey or yeah yeah you know, that sort of thing and that was definitely the vibe 
and mm-hmm. uh, you know, uh, David and I, we at that point we'd done a, a bunch of books together already too. So we had like developed our own like creative love language, language. Mm-hmm. yeah, love language, and uh, so it's you know, we chat on the phone all the time. So if there's any questions, I could just call him up and and uh, yeah. just shoot the shit and be like, hey, what are you thinking here? And then we kind of work things out and. I'll give him my ideas and then I'll do some little doodles or whatever and send him his way and and he'll give his input like I like this maybe change this or add this da 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 mm-hmm. and uh, you know eventually then you see what's on the page you know say make um, the baby bigger <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah I mean make that... it look like a baby Marlon Brando that's what I... yeah. <laughs> yeah 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 oh I like the jowls a whole lot can you accentuate that please <laughs> see, I it's kind of that. appropriate too that Taft ends up living on a giant baby because he's you know devote his life to helping children so it's kind of exactly like... the symbolism does not that's stop cool. no it does not yeah I love right. it he's turning it up to you yeah <laughs> And I love your style, too, of how you, you know, have brought this world together and, you know, looking at your other work for, you know, uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and Rick and Morty, it definitely I wouldn't like you have your own style for sure. But Mm -hmm. to me, it seems like you you write to fit the book and the style. I'm sorry. Draw to fit the book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, sorry. But yeah, draw to fit the book. And like with Taft, I really love the cartoony kind of, you kind of mentioned it with the Calvin and Hobbes kind of influence. And I think it just fits the story so well. And it makes this whole world just so enthralling. Like I said, I was, I was obsessed with the character of Taft, but as I was reading the one shot, I found myself just like literally sitting there just pondering like, what is an incubation city like what is that you know i mean like the world you guys have created really pulled me in and again that's what really i think also pulled me in with this holiday special so you guys have talked about you know this kind of came about with your you guys both love you know holiday specials the holiday uh time of year and dave you've already kind of uh touched on this a little bit but i am curious if we can kind of talk a little bit more about it but Why did you decide for both you guys, why Taft to do this holiday special? I mean, I'm sure that there's hundreds of uh, holiday kind of ideas that you guys have being, you know, fans of the holiday special genre. What was it about? And again, uh, the first one shot was in 2016. So what was it about this story where you're like, you know what, let's brush Taft off and bring him into this? What? Why was, you know, and as opposed to just a new random character or, you know, just a single standalone holiday special that has nothing to do with this world. We had had conversations before about doing like holiday specials with Taft in the past, like maybe trying to do something online and this, that and the other. But I think, again, like affinity for big men um, (laughs) and having having like being able to have mirrors and representation of goodwill and the spirit of kindness and uh graciousness and kindness and all that kind of good stuff was like something that i was really going for and i felt that we already created a character like that and like what better way to explore those themes than with like the thing that we made we made specifically as like our type of Superman, like our Mm -hmm. every er, everyday guy, it's like, you know, you can go out and you could be a decent person, like with in whatever arena that you're in. And um, just bringing him to this was, I felt like, yeah, we both just agreed that, well, why don't we have like a lot of fun Mm -hmm. and what can we have fun with? Well, why not this character that we already created and, and explore like, again, like what a Christmas mythology would look like in space. And I think that was another thing that was like really turning us on was like, well, why would the holiday, why would Christmas be celebrated throughout the universe? Mm -hmm. And it's like not a colonial like idea, right? There isn't like a malevolent thing behind it where it's just like, oh, it's because it's earth and earth has taken over everything and like this, that, and the other. It's like, no, like, what does it mean to have like some sort of like cosmological holiday that Mm -hmm. you know exists in some way shape or form and -hmm. i think and have again having taft who like celebrates those things already year round like what does it look like to just turn that up a little bit yeah just fit per the piece just fit perfectly right it did yeah Yeah. i just yeah i just think it did like again it's 
I don't know. It's a, it, and it's also a character that like I believe in mm-hmm. and Tony believes in, and I believe in the work that I'm doing with Tony and what Tony is doing with me. And like, I, I, I would much rather explore something that we and I have created. He and I have created together. And like, again, like you said, like dust it off, like, where are we as creators now? Cause I mean, it's, was that six years ago, six, seven years ago, a lot of things have happened to both he and I, and like, you know, this is a perfect way to be like, well, how can we best talk about how we feel as individuals and how we feel as as individuals during this season? Like when we have experienced great loss and, and, and great gain Mm -hmm. at, at times too. And, uh, yeah. And Taft is the perfect vehicle for that, I think, because he represents the best of, I think he represents the best of Tony and I, and um, it allows us also to like explore our own personal weaknesses in a, uh, in a, in a extraterrestrial universal setting. Oof. Ooh, I love that, man. You cooked with that one. I wish, I wish I had Blake set up over here and get you the air horns right now. <laughs> you just cooked with that one. <laughs> yeah. I love that, dude. And I mean, especially, uh, you know, we're just talking about this Taff. The original Taff was in 2016. And I mean, everyone has had crazy years since then. Yes. You know, pandemic and all this other crazy stuff going on. So I think that a character like Taff not only is perfect for this holiday special, but just perfect for where we're at right now. I think kind of going back to what we were talking about with like, you know, the typical grizzled cop character. I think a character like Taff is very needed today and someone who is just good and has a good heart and represents, like you said, kindness and kind of wholesomeness. Empathy and and compassion might be another. Yeah. Some some more buzzwords. (laughs) Mm -hmm, Yeah, exactly. Throw all the buzzword, the keywords in there for the SEO search. Mm -hmm. But Tony, you know, it, it seems like these days people mistake kindness for weakness more than they ever did. So it's like, right. Mm. It's nice to show people that you can be kind and strong at the same time. Yeah. I, Oh dude, I love that. That was another cooking again, dude. That's a pull quote right <laughs> there. But Tony, I'm curious for you. We're talking about this Christmas and stuff. And I, again, the whole mythology and world building, I'm very, very interested in. So that's my next question. But before we get to that, I'm curious for you, Tony, for, you're so you're doing a holiday uh christmas story and mm-hmm. you're dealing with I, I mean you can't have a holiday or christmas story without santa claus and you know rain all the typical christmas stuff so i'm yep. very curious as an artist and you're drawing i think it's similar to like superheroes right if you were like drawing superman right but santa claus is very like everyone has a picture of Santa Claus in their head and same with like Mrs. Claus and all these other kind of characters. So what was, I guess, research if you would, but what was the kind of process like of developing designs for these literally iconic characters throughout history and like putting your own stamp on that? I saw on your sketch pages on the Kickstarter uh, your Mrs. Claus, which I, you know, very unique, very different than, you know, I think what most people would think of Mrs. Claus. Uh, and that kind of goes into the mythology of the Christmas you guys are making. But again, just like from a design standpoint, what was that like designing a new Santa Claus? Like that sounds insane in my head. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, kind of, you know, he looks a little bit like the Coca-Cola Santa Claus that we all know mm-hmm. and love. Um, but, you know, as you find out in the story, he appears to the observer as uh, in, in whatever form that they would feel comfortable with. So, um, you know, to humans, he looks like a, you know, a humanoid, mm-hmm. but then like to say, if he appears to a walrus man, he might look like a walrus Santa and you might see that in the book. Or the walrus end. Santa. I'm in. You might. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but Mrs. Claus, you know, I just wanted her to look alien and uh, look a little, uh, I don't know what the word would be. I, the day, when we were kicking around these ideas, David sent me like just like artwork from like like classic Santas mm-hmm. all throughout time, like of like back in like uh, I mean, what was it, David? It's like Slavic and, and yeah, Nordic, and Nordic. Like yeah, like we were stuff. just we would just like dig, 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 yeah. dig, and I and and like I don't know. But that's I, what they I, want to get to. Like it's something I got to draw over and over again. So right, I don't mm-hmm. want to draw something too ornate and too like over the top. This is going to be a pain in the ass to draw. And yeah. also, like, uh, I, I don't want it to be so, like, alien to people that it 
it's like trying too hard to not yeah. be Santa and yeah. like be embarrassed. Like, I don't want to like just doing a holiday book. Some people will cringe at it because they just feel like it's uh, corny or whatever. And mm-hmm. I don't want to like run away from that. I want to lean into it. It's like, no, yeah. it's, if you think that's corny, that's on you. It's not on me or David mm-hmm. that you <laughs> but find Christmas to be corny. Yeah, that's, dude it, flies around with reindeer delivering presents. Like, that's corny. I'm yeah. sorry. Well, the whole idea <laughs> of Christmas itself in the holidays, you know, some yeah. people just are about humbug about it. Yeah, that's like, um, I, and, and I love that approach because I feel like so many people, art, are artists, writers, like, take themselves and subjects like so seriously and like at least for me like uh people will you know talk about thor right and like how he needs to be like all serious and all this stuff and i'm always like dudes he rides he flies through space on a rainbow bridge with a hammer like that's goofy you know what i mean like yeah it's cool but it's goofy and i appreciate when writers artists lean into the goofiness but not in a way of like making fun of it or you know i mean like you said you're leaning into the goofy but in a way that accentuates it yeah and i didn't want to make it too alien because i didn't want it to be like oh they're ashamed of Mm -hmm. you know stana or like we're doing a holiday book but it's not a holiday book and you know but it takes place during christmas you know like die Mm -hmm. hard is a christmas movie no it's a christmas special me and dave are gonna have to battle it out on that one because that was that's in my that's in my (laughs) cue questions for sure (laughs) but we're like no this is what it is it's unabashedly a holiday special and it's santa Mm -hmm. and it's a santa that you recognize probably in some on some level even yeah. though he looks a little alien, he's a little different. And mm-hmm. Maybe his outfit doesn't look like something you see in the department store, but he's Santa and he's, and, and we're not, you know, and he has elves and there's reindeer and they fly. And it's not like, we're not, you know, we're not doing like a dark Krampusy thing or we're not doing yeah. a, not reinventing the claws here. Right. No, <laughs> I mean, there's also I mean, we are in technology. A way, we're not, yeah. You know? mm-hmm. yeah. 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 yeah technology. We, we came up with like, yeah. I mean, it's secular. North- the book is secular. The thing is, it's it, the holiday spirit itself is is through the book, you know. And and we kind of felt like embracing that aspect of it. And, mm-hmm. and, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I think you guys nailed it. it. And like I said, I just like, I mean, this just shows why you're the artist and I'm just a guy who talks about comics on the internet. <laughs> but like, you know, I just am, and can only imagine like someone's like, hey come up with a new design for santa claus like you were just saying you were looking at you know uh slavic and all these other kinds of iterations of santa or santa claus and i just there's so much of it so many different people interpret it in different ways i could only like i said imagine i don't even know where i would start with that so like that's why i said i'm just very interested like how you even started to approach that it's hard because you look at like you said there's so much and it's like well you want to use all of it yeah but then like you also don't want to use any of it it's like and that's like exactly just... kind of what you're touching on too i'm sure that was super hard of like you said you know you want it to look like santa but you don't want to just recreate like you said the coca-cola santa right like you yeah. want it to be unique but then not too close to this version i uh dude again that's why you're the artist that's why i just talk <laughs> about this stuff but yeah it, we tried was... to we tried to put in like silver surfer and cosmic entities and like heralds of yep. like abstracts right the abstracts of the universe and so that's what we were also trying to do was like like you were saying like you see a giant cosmic space baby well what else is in this realm mm-hmm. and uh and santa and the, well the clauses period are you know they're representations of of a universe you know experiencing itself through kindness joy and compassion and empathy and it's mm-hmm. just like well how do i do that well whether I take a mortal and imbue it with the power cosmic or like, you know, crack off a piece of myself and let it like have its own consciousness and, and experience itself and experience others. And I think that's what we were also trying to do. We were taking again, Jack Kirby and like mm-hmm. the Marvel cosmic abstracts and all that kind of stuff, like in between her and eternity and all that weird shit. And just like, try to, what does that look like? And I mean, yeah, the, like, the clauses are giants in our in our you know not i mean kind of a spoiler but it's just like it's mm-hmm. not like yeah, they're like they're people. big yeah <laughs> bigger than life bigger yeah, than life like, <laughs> but and, love... yeah so i'm sorry for cutting you off with that no. i wanted to get that in there hey cut me off anytime you want my man like i said we're here for you guys <laughs> but you are honestly i think you're reading my mind a little bit because you just let in perfectly to what i wanted to ask you next and it's a similar question for Tony of, you know, crafting a new Santa Claus. What was it like? You, uh, you, like I said, you just touched on this perfectly, but 
getting a little bit more into it, what was it like crafting a new mythology for Christmas? And I want to I want to throw this out because this I just thought was so again fascinating got my wheels turning you said that uh, the christmas star is a cosmic abstract of kindness and goodwill with the clauses being heralds of christmas like you just explained the kind of silver surfer reference and again dude that is just so cool like the way that you describe it the way that you've laid it out i think is so so cool so again kind of similar question what was it like even just approaching the subject matter of Christmas with, again, so many different iterations of like what Christmas means, the story of Christmas, especially if you're going to like different cultures and whatnot about how they uh, interpret Christmas and stuff. So again, I don't even know how I would begin to start approaching that. Well, it's like, I mean, if you, if you looked at the real world, we kind of do that anyway. Mm -hmm. it, it's the personal experience, right? Yeah. That's yeah. what it is. And yeah. so, when Tony and I are trying to craft this Christmas mythology, it's the personal experience mixed with, you know, the gravitas, like what, what is it, what does this actually mean when you start breaking it down more and more and more distilling, like what it, what it actually represents. Mm -hmm. And I think just from like watching Christmas movies, reading Christmas books, listening to, you know, people talk about Christmas and what it means to them and then infusing it with comics, like, just the comics that we love to read and and that also inspired um the creation of Taft Sturgeon in in this world it's like all that stuff just comes together and it's just like okay like yeah like in the earlier in the podcast when we were talking is just like you know what does that all look like like what does it all look like how does how does an, a universe experience christmas and things like that and so and as tony was saying like it being secular to the point of like it's it's a shared experience throughout the universe and it's not like just one idea mm, of yeah. like our, you know, it's the birth of Jesus Christ or it's Yuletide or it's Thor, so, you, you know, know, winter solstice or it's yeah, amazing, winter amazing. solstice, Thor riding over the, the moon and like Demeter, like, but, but it's also is that because it's like, if you look at the mythologies of the world, they, we all have this, you know, all cultures have this end of the year thing. And so it's like, mm -hmm. Well, what do pe more people do? What are people doing? What have people done? And then it's also like listening to the Iliad and the Odyssey and like getting into some Greek myth and some like getting into the the Nordic myth and the Norse myth. And then like taking all those things and being like, well, that's quite cool. That's cool. That's cool. That's yeah. cool. And then it's just like, well, if we're going to do a cosmic comic book, what, what kind of great cosmic comic book tropes and themes can we also, you know, mesh and mm -hmm. meld with that so mm. it's like if you walk around your neighborhood and then like you'll see different decorations right and then like yeah. some people have like a like the 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 what's it the nativity scene in their front yard and some people mm -hmm. have giant snowmen and some people have santa's landing in the front yard with elves and some people <laughs> just have trees lit up and some people don't have anything some yeah. people have a menorah, stuff, like, a menorah yeah, like yeah but everyone kind of celebrates this thing at this time of the year we all agree that this is the time of year that we mm -hmm. do it is so the only reason that because we all agree upon it essentially as a, as a culture as a society as a species this is when we do this mm -hmm. you know and then if you take that and you just expand it and like well what if it was different universes and galaxies and they all <laughs> celebrate this thing and then it's all a different interpretation through their lens and their perspective you know Mm -hmm. but Which it all kind of comes from the same spot the same like place of heart and like caring and giving mm -hmm. you know yeah, yeah. and I, that's what it is right yeah i love that so so much being someone who you know i grew up not you know very religious or anything and like either. that so you know for me christmas was always about like kind of what you guys are saying it's about kindness about giving about you know all that kind of stuff like the magic if you would right but it was mm -hmm. never a religious thing for me so that's something that i really really loved about this story and again your guys' approach to it is it's not uh, contingent on like christianity or what yeah. or what have you I'm not is saying that that's wrong that. either you know it's exactly like, not saying right, that's wrong yeah. but everyone experiences it differently and i think that's at least for me something that i personally love about christmas and the holiday time is like i was saying everyone 
experiences it differently. They have their own traditions. They think about it, you know, in a certain way. And I think you guys hit that concept really well. And like I said, for someone who I, that's how I've always felt about Christmas. I think, again, you guys really hit that vein well. And that was something that really resonated for me being a fan of, you know, Christmas and the holiday time. And again, you, you know, you add in space and, you know, cosmic entities and shit like mm, I'll eat that shit up all day. Mm. I love it. Wonderful. Uh, I love it so much. And like I said, I just think it's so again, this is why you're the writer and I'm just the guy idiot talking about comic books, but like the way that you conceptualize this whole idea of Christmas, bringing it to the Christmas star and like Santa, like you guys were saying, he, you know, takes the form that's appealing to whoever it is he's interacting with. It's just like, Oh, that's so cool. And I love, I just think that's such a cool concept. And I mean, I know I've only read the first, I think 20, 24 pages, but I cannot wait to get to Taft going through that hole, going to the North Pole, all that stuff. It's so cool, Tony. I've seen your pages, specifically the one with the Christmas. I think it's the uh, Christmas star, like in the foreground and Taft and Santa are like standing. Oh, dude, beautiful. Like brought a, a single tear rolled down my eye for Christmas <laughs> time. It was so good. But I'm curious. So you guys have talked about another aspect of this book, not only being, you know, the Christmas vein and bringing Taft back, but you said that you wanted to do this story in order for the characters to uh, to grow and to change. And so I'm very curious of what what kind of, I, without spoilers, obviously, we don't want to spoil the book for anyone, but when you guys were crafting this story and have this idea of we want Taft to go through some kind of growth and some kind of change. What was that kind of growth and change you guys were trying to portray with this book? And not only just with characters of Taff, but I'm sure that probably relates to, you know, Gino and Shanice. Like, does that translate to those characters as well? I think so. Um, a lot of the themes are like personal responsibility and and knowing that you have enough within you to do what needs to be done. Like, and I think each and each character chose their family and like the, the Shanice, Gino and, and Taft, they are a family and they have each other's backs and they try to have each other's best interests and they try to be the voice of reason to each other. And despite all those things, it's like, you still have to, you have to believe that yourself. Mm -hmm. And um, I think what Tony and I were going for was just like, you can, you can, do, you can do it. You can do it and you need your friend's help, but you can, you, you, you know, you are also that person as well. Like, don't, don't beat yourself up. <laughs> and I feel like, <laughs> I feel a little like Taft, nicer to yourself. Yeah. And I feel like Taft is that like, be kind to yourself. And, mm -hmm. and I think to, like one of the themes of that, of this book also is that don't forget to be kind to yourself as well as others. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, the book isn't, it's not like a saving Christmas book where, you know, Taft has to like make sure that Santa delivers the presents or, you know, Christmas is in jeopardy because uh, like David yeah. said, has said before, that's not, you know, that's too big of a, a concept that Christmas will always be Christmas. Mm -hmm. It's more about like Taft is going through a thing. He's going through like a period of self-doubt or like fatigue or burnout or whatever, whatever you want to call it. And kind of like, you know, like we all do. And like, how how is he able to find that? spirit inside of him again which is essentially also like you know the the christmas spirit that's mm -hmm. like and so it just happens to be the time of year when he's having this crisis he's going through this case and this is the journey he goes through to help him get through not to give anything away but you know he gets to the other side of it because that's mm -hmm. like you know the whole point of the story he dies <laughs> <laughs> spoiler everybody dies <laughs> oh. yeah. i don't think anyone dies in a taft book this is like the one of the we, in, in ancient noise there's a whole sequence where a guy uh, clones himself and kills himself uh, like hundreds of times and then had to that draw a whole funny. like yeah a whole page of him just in a room with like a piles of his own cloned dead bodies <laughs> uh, naked you know in a pile of blood and then uh, in this book i'm drawing like uh, elves and reindeer i'll say that sounds cheerful right nice little change <laughs> of pace <laughs> yeah definitely it's a nice well it's much, much needed <laughs> yeah i'm sure and like you said getting the getting a little christmas uh a detox if you would from mm. killing a dude a million times but yeah 
I'm curious where, you know, obviously, you know, Christmas time, we were just talking about, you know, everyone has their own traditions and all that stuff. And so, or I'm sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. What am I doing? Taft, Taft Holiday in the Stars. It's on Kickstarter right now. And so let's talk a little bit about this Kickstarter. So the Kickstarter is going to end on the 25th. 24? 25th at 12 a.m. So that's okay. like mid, you know, midnight for us so, folk who who say, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I would say technically perfect, it's Christmas. Yeah, say perfect time to get it under your tree, just in time for Christmas time. So mm-hmm. one of the tiers I want to talk about while I'm getting this up is Tony. You're doing some commissions, correct? Yes. For one of the tiers. Yeah, so, I believe it's a uh, add-on on the, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's an add-on. add-on. Yep. Yeah. You can purchase pages. You can purchase original pages from Tony. Um, and he has some sketch cards. I think we only have one left. I think we only have Gino left. Oh, really? They yeah. got skipped up. Nice. Um, yeah. Tony's doing pages. He's got sketches, commissions. This And this brought me to my question about your designs for the characters. But this one of Mrs. Claus is just like, it's nuts, dude. Like, what the hell? I love this so much. And also you got a uh, Gino cable, which mm-hmm. I know I'm sure that kind of gets into spoilers, but dude, come on now. It's like, what else, what else do you guys need to pick up this book? Like, seriously. <laughs> that's not in the comic. Yeah, that's just something I, I mean, oh, it's not in the comic. No, I just got okay, I okay. a kick of like drawing characters and, as cable. So I drew like a Monty Moose from Ninja Turtles as cable. I oh. drew this uh, character digs from a, a book Starweed that I do. Mm-hmm. I drew her as Cable. Uh, I drew Pork Chop Robot Killer, which is a zoo book that I did that uh, got funded a couple months ago. Mm-hmm. I drew him as Cable. So it's kind of like this thing. It's all kind of inspired by the John Romita Jr. big chunky Cable cover he did all those years ago where it's just mm-hmm. standing there with his guns. Yeah, man. Pouches on the galore, baby. Yeah, pouches galore, big guns galore. <laughs> Well, so, shit, I know I know what I want my commission to be now for sure. But this is so this book is like I said when we first started this. This is a fatty book. This is 140 pages. So you're getting yep. more than your money's worth with this Kickstarter. But as far as the rewards and all that stuff goes, I'm curious with your guys' experience on Kickstarter, uh what's like the biggest I guess plus of bringing a book like this to kickstarter especially a 140 page book i feel like you don't see i mean there's hundreds of kickstarters out there but usually it's issue by issue so what was the decision to make this just a big fatty graphic novel as opposed to like you know four or five issues or or like a mini series well we had done single issues with ancient noise Mm -hmm. um and it just felt i don't know it felt like it took well, it did, I did take a long time. We were, we would do like maybe an issue a year because, uh, I mean, that's really all I can, I can honestly afford, um, <laughs> uh, trying to, you know, keep everyone paid, keep everyone interested in the project and like mm. at the same time, like still be able to eat. So like that happened, we were doing single issues, found that it was, it's just as rewarding, mm-hmm. but, um, at the end of the day, like, I think we just decided to do a graphic novel because we thought that it would be more appealing to the mass market, Mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Like, instead of uh, somebody just like, a single issue holiday series is like, yeah, how do you, it doesn't even logistically, I mean, we would start next year. We would have started in, I mean, we would have, yeah, we would have started in 2024 and whether we would have done like a Patreon or like every couple months, like here's another one, here's another one, here's another one. Mm -hmm. Um, But I think we just decided like it's more appealing to have like a one and done thick, thick fatty ready for you in 2024 when it's printed. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, we just thought it was more enticing Mm -hmm. as a, as a, as a, as a project, as an, as an artifact. And uh, yeah, that, that's was, that was what the decision was. Yeah. I mean, it makes sense. I mean, I feel like kind of stupid now, even just thinking about it, like you said, yeah, a holiday book that comes out, you know, five issues, you'd have to start that like at least mid November for it to, you know, end on Christmas or, you know, in that time. So yeah, it makes sense that you would do it and just 
one big graphic novel, you get your nice Christmas story, and then, you know, go open up gifts, have some eggnog or whatever. Yeah, and why it's 140 pages, I and mean, we started at 100, and it's kind of like... Just kind of yeah. kept growing and growing. Kinda go, yeah, kind of well, told itself to the point. And... I think that kind of goes back to what you were talking about earlier, though, Dave. Like you said, you got to follow the fun. And it's you like, follow if, the the fun. Fun, if the fun is taking you in the direction, you got to follow it. You can't cut it off. Mm-hmm. And I think that results in the best stories and you know, most fun stories. Cause I mean, at the end of the day, what are we doing here? If not trying to have fun. Right. Right. Yep. And so the Kickstarter, like we said, we, it's got a couple days left. It's going to be ending on Christmas got Eve. Got a week oh, left. Uh, we're about halfway yeah. there to the goal. The <laughs> and then, so the available rewards that are still on here, you get the digital, get the print retail tier, the sketch card, plus the book original art page original cover art i mean guys come on what else do you need i mean we've been talking about how great this book is for the past hour here i have only read the first like i said 20 pages and i am a hundred percent on board you guys if if you guys grabbed me i'm sure it's going to grab all of you guys out there watching and listening to this so i'm going to back it please go out there and go back this book i I give you the Fat Thor guarantee that you guys will love it. It is perfect for this holiday season. But before and next and those to come. Yes, exactly. It'll be the new staple. 119 pages are drawn, by the way. Mm -hmm. Uh, So it's pretty much almost finished. And Guillermo Mendez, the super talented colorist, he's chugging along uh, as well. And actually, Taylor Taylor Esposito, the letter uh, already lettered whatever all the pages that are that are mm-hmm. finished or that yeah. are drawn <laughs> on all 119 pages have been lettered, and we still have yeah. uh yeah about 20 pages to go what yeah. is that something like that yeah, yeah. Like, let's go we're in the home stretch baby come we on are. let's get it and we like are. i said i i want to say really quickly though shout out to the colorist and the letterer on this book as well the colors pop so much like literally off the page tony your art is amazing the colors just really, I think, bring it all together and really bring it to yeah. life. So shout out to them as well. But speaking of traditions, which I think, at least for me, Taft is definitely going to become one of my new holiday traditions. But I'm oh. curious, before we get out of here, we're talking all this Christmas, talking all this holiday. And something that we usually do on the show is ask you know, people, what are they reading sort of thing? But hey, it's the holiday season, so let's get a little Christmassy here. And I'm curious, so what are some of your guys' favorite traditions uh, during the holiday season? Like we just talked about, I feel like every person, every family has their, you know, thing that they do every single year. So what are some of those favorites for you? Either one of you guys want to go first. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, My wife and I are actually, it, it started... It started with my my dad and my sister, but we usually um, Christmas Eve and generally the week and before Christmas, we will drive around and look at Christmas lights, drink hot cocoa, drink coffee, whatever it is, listen to Christmas music and just talk, get together. Mm -hmm. Um, We have like a sort of a feast of seven fishes type deal that we do on Christmas Mm -hmm. Eve. Uh, We definitely decorate we're big decorators there's a a place called longwood gardens that is a a state away in pennsylvania it's a huge like arboretum type thing with uh they do a a whole light show and christmas festivity that we like to go to this year we're not going um because of just taft because of taft sturgeon (laughs) um we normally drive to new york city for a night and go to a place called Diker Heights out in brooklyn and look at their christmas lights because their christmas lights are ridiculous like Mm. think about a new york like think about your neighborhood but just like if millionaires paid people to decorate their homes with like (laughs) 10 foot nutcrackers and 10 foot uh snow snowmen and santa clauses and snowblowers and just it's fucking crazy out there it's like you're in whoville or something yes it is it is literally that um and uh yeah we just we watch movies we we hunker down and uh but like I said, some of some of our traditions are more costly traditions have gone to the wayside this year because of Big mm-hmm. Taft. Um, so we'd appreciate it. Yeah, say everyone make, if you, you made our it, holiday. Say yeah, make <laughs> make our holiday, everybody. Go and back Taft for sure. So that way Ooh. we can we can go to Brooklyn, see some sick ass lights. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, oh go ahead, go ahead. 
what does tony do yeah tony what what is your favorite holiday tradition uh usually i go to my friend tim daniel's uh, house here in missoula and i spend the holidays with his family um on thanksgiving we'll sit around and watch uh home for the holidays which is a classic uh jody foster film from the 90s and then christmas it's usually uh i think last year we watched pinocchio or whatever whatever it came out just around there he's got a little one and uh and uh you know, she still believes in Santa, so it's kind of cool to like go over there and see, like go over there yeah. on Christmas Eve and help yeah. them put, like, help him and his wife put the presents out for her. That's awesome. And, like, eat the cookies and you know, the mm. take the note and pretend Santa was there and do that whole thing. So I gotta I enjoy that. I um, say eating cookies, sign me up. I'll be Santa. Yeah. <laughs> it's all about the cookies. Yeah, that's what Christmas <laughs> is cookies, really Paul. about. <laughs> But yeah, I love that. Like I said, I feel like everyone has their own, you know, kind of tradition for me. It's, you know, every Christmas Eve, we're watching Christmas Vacation Mm -hmm. on Christmas Day. It's a Christmas story. Mm -hmm. Like That's like, I don't know. That's just how we do it. It's on TBS for 24 hours. I say it's on like every (laughs) single channel all day long. So it's like, yeah, throw something on while, you know, you're opening up gifts. But that leads me to my next question. Again, we usually ask, you know, what are people reading? What, you know? that kind of stuff but we've been talking about you guys love holiday specials holiday movies and stuff so i want to know what your guys is i mean i guess at least for me it's hard to pick a favorite because there's so many good ones but you know some of your favorite uh holiday season watches uh series what you know what's on the list of watching this holiday season for you guys you know i'm gonna start writing this down because i i i always I'm always adding things. So mm-hmm. actually there is a, a feast of seven fishes movie that yes. was, uh, that was, that got on my radar from a, my friend of mine mm-hmm. that he, he's been throwing it all around to everybody. Feast of seven fishes is great. Mm-hmm. Takes place in a, in a uh, Pennsylvania town. Um, very working class feeling, but it's like mm-hmm. a lot of heart. Uh, okay. Daddy's home too. Um, uh, great. I know Mel- I know Mel Gibson is in it and I know he's a problematic individual, Mm. but if you like the great outdoors and Christmas vacation, that is literally that movie put together. Mm -hmm. And so daddy's home to too is great. Um, You know, we watch nightmare before Christmas. We watch elf uh, Christmas vacation, of course. Um, We've been, you know, all the, all the like Rankin and bass stuff. Um, And uh then we try to experiment. We just try to like, oh, this is a new Christmas movie. Let's watch it. Oh, this mm-hmm. is new. Like that that Kurt Russell one was fine. Oh, it, I saw that actually on Netflix. Yeah, it missed mm-hmm. something for me. Um, the Santa Claus, the Santa Clauses. Like I like the Santa Claus movies, the Tim Allen mm-hmm. ones, even though like he's also one. yeah, the <laughs> first one for sure. He's a problematic individual as well, mm-hmm. but which is weird to me because it's like if you're gonna play santa dude you gotta have something in you (laughs) something in you that has to that has to mm. but uh the show man i i will say like it's fine it does it does get into some nooks and crannies that i enjoy as far as like christmas mythology and like Mm -hmm. you know shit like that but some of the stuff it, it kind of feels like i mean i know it has to be formulaic to a point but i mean formulaic into the craft of like Oh, this feels like somebody read Saves the Cat and like we're just doing this now. Like we're yeah. just doing this happens, then this happens, then this happens, then this happens. And then, you know, sometimes like some weird, like off the cuff uh societal joke will come in that just <laughs> feels like super like just yeah. record skippy. Like I know exactly like, what you mean. What I haven't caught fuck? the the second season yet. I watched it last year. But though. the first season, yeah, mm-hmm. that first season, I'm like, why would Santa wouldn't say anything like that? Yeah. And, and then like, you know, listen to me. Santa wouldn't say that. <laughs> yeah. How dare you? I know Santa. <laughs> he wouldn't say that. <laughs> How dare you? I know I him. Yeah. <laughs> um that was perfect. But yeah, like that's that's where I that's where we generally go. And no. Jim Carrey Grinch is like fucking great. Mm. Polar Express makes me cry. We just watched that the other day, and I haven't. So we went on a field trip in like my elementary school to see. It was like right when it came out, and yeah. we saw it. I don't think I've seen it since then. And yeah. so we were like just scrolling through. I was like, let's watch Polar Express. I haven't seen that since I was like you know ten years old. And I was like, 
damn, this movie holds up. And not only that, but I didn't realize Tom Hanks plays like every single character yeah. in that movie. Yeah. I was like, holy shit, that's Tom Hanks. Oh, that's Tom Hanks. Oh, Santa's Tom Hanks. <laughs> but that animation, though, that oh. animation does not hold up. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> the the meme of the girl the sitting with the hunchback gets me every time. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, but Tony, what are some of your favorite holiday uh, media to consume, whether it be, you know, movies, shows? I'm sure that, you know, we probably all have very similar lists here. You can't beat some of the classics. Yeah, I mean, you named a bunch of them. Right now, me and my friends and I uh, uh, have a group of like artists, uh, peers, and we hang out and watch movies every night, uh, like on, in a chat, like a Google chat. Mm-hmm. And so uh, we've been watching these, like every every Christmas movie that's on Tubi, like all oh, those okay. shitty, the, the like, real good ones, huh? Yeah, the <laughs> ones, like, it's always like the, it's always like a girl from a small town goes to the big city to try to make it, and then she goes back to her small town and falls back in love with her high school crush, who shows mm-hmm. her that it's better off to be you know living in the small <laughs> town, or like a. Uh, uh, I love the we love the LBGTQ uh, Christmas movies as well. Those are a fun watch because there's always like different dynamics there. Mm-hmm. And any, like lately, it's just been like anything that's like like a, a B level Christmas movie, like the B movie <laughs> cheese, the B stuff. movie the cheese hey. one, or like the, it's like the cheap Hallmark ones. It's yep. like it's yeah, just, hey, sometimes those day. are the best, honestly. You know, uh, called uh, uh, Christmas in Handcuffs with a. Uh, uh, Mario Lopez and uh, oh boy, uh, Melissa Joan Hart. Is yeah, that okay. That okay. sounds Oscar worthy right there, dude. It is so bad that it's hilarious, uh, and we kind of like loved it, you know. And but, see, um, I love movies like that. Like, I mean, don't get me wrong. Like, a bad movie is a bad movie, but yeah. I love movies that are like so bad it becomes kind of good. Like, I mean, everyone I don't knows, know if like, I would say the that room. they're even. I wouldn't even say that they, they're so bad that they're good. No, but, but I mean like good so in the sense of like you thing. enjoy it. Yeah. Like you're having fun yeah. watching it. That's like my favorite type of movie yeah. that I can just shit, like not to be like mean or anything, but like I can yeah. just watch and just kind of shit on the whole time. Like, yeah, with my I, friends. It's not, these are movies I'd, ne- I'd never watch alone. Yeah. Because uh, mm. I, I, if I'm mm-hmm. alone, I'll, I'm watching a good movie. You know, I'm not mm-hmm. going to watch or something I find entertaining, but like it's something a party I can movie. make fun a party movie yeah it's a hangout yeah. movie it's a movie yeah, yeah hang out we're movie. all drawn or coloring comics and watching yeah. it and making fun of it at the yeah. same time <laughs> what did that that what yeah, <laughs> yeah. rewind it's that real like, quick yeah there was one called uh uh pottersville that we watched yeah, yeah. oh my god that movie was psychotic <laughs> with michael shannon yeah, it's insane. yeah, and the big Michael foot? Shannon's in it. I'm oh, yeah, there man. already. It yeah, is, no, it's weird and wild, yes. and it's like yes. And you're watching it, you're like, why are all these people in this movie? Like, yes, why are all these people <laughs> in this movie? And what is this movie about? Like, yeah, what's this about? Who's who do they? I gotta write to? this one down now. What is this <laughs> it's one? It's on TV. Pottersville. Pottersville. I think, yeah, I think it might oh. actually be on Netflix too, or it was. I say, why do I feel like I've seen this or I've heard it? Like the name is is unlocking something in here. Yeah. But I'm definitely gonna check that out. But I got yeah. There's like ask. Bigfoot stuff and you know, yeah. Michael Shannon just was, being intense. Michael Shannon, yeah. Bigfoot, done. I'm in. Mm. That's all. You, that's all you got to do to sell me here. But <laughs> I gotta bring this up. I mean, this is, we're closing in on an hour here, so this would be one of the last questions we got for you. But my man Dave, we have some beef. Not beef, but Die Hard. So. I've seen you say that Die Hard is not a Christmas movie. And in this house, Christmas doesn't start until Hans Gruber hits the pavement. Gruber, excuse me. So I'm curious. I I mean, this is all just fun. I'm not being serious. But I know. I why? Know. So what is it about Die Hard that is not a Christmas movie? I feel like that's where we should start this conversation. Why is it not a Christmas movie to you? Why it's not a Christmas movie to me? You know, everything can be argued till people are blue in the face. But as far as like Christmas spirit comes, and I know that John McClane is like sacrificing himself to fucking help everybody <laughs> and do this and do that. And what is giving than blood, sweat and tears? And he does that. I didn't but, even think like, about it like that. That's a good point for my argument. <laughs> right. I mean, that's what I mean. Like, I, you know, I, I don't watch it because it just doesn't feel like I don't get that christmas so feeling i don't get that christmas feeling i don't mm-hmm. get that that sense of joy that sense. i mean and i i get like ultra violence don't get me wrong like i love robocop i love like shit from that era and mm-hmm. you talked about it a lot like and about like the 
you know, and, and on uh, what is it, wine and comics pairings, like they talk about the maverick cop, right? The guy mm -hmm. who's serving justice is hot, and like mm, I get it, I get like being an anti terrorist, and I get like wrecking shop, and I get the setting is a Christmas party, but I don't get that that joyous feeling that swelling that of and i mean i know part of it is nostalgia and i know part of it is like but part of it a lot of it is joy and love and i know that mm. a man has to have so much joy and love for his his estranged wife to go and try <laughs> to save her and her co-workers but yeah it just doesn't you know we just we just rattled off like what we watch and like mm -hmm. if you put die hard in there there's somebody there's an odd man out here like, yeah there's something like there's something there that's missing in die hard and i don't know it's hey, just it just I never never vibed with me i think that's completely fair like i said i just i had to poke fun at you for it and i want to get you know your perspective on it i think that's a hundred percent fair but it's not a bad movie and i did and i'm not saying oh, that okay. it's not... i would say we will fight over that so no, no, I <laughs> I yeah, I will not say that it is a bad movie. I mm -hmm. will not I you know, I won't say that. I'm not this is in no way shape or form like a a, a critique on it on oh, the craft. Yeah, and 100%. on the film itself. We're just but, talking how in the scope of holiday regardless yeah. of whether you like the movie or not. Like yeah. said, just a, is it a Christmas I mean, movie? It, yes or it no. It takes place during Christmas, but is that like is that pertinent to the story at all like does christmas play any well part? see this is, is where i would that argue, could take so, place at any part like it so could this be is just what i would argue right party. this is my my side of the conversation is i say it is a christmas movie because not for the uh you know the setting the thrills of you know christmas the christmas tree or ho 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 i got a machine gun all that good stuff but to me what makes it a christmas movie is at the end of the day it's a story about a guy trying to get home for Christmas. At least that's how I look at it. So that's why, at least for me, that's the argument that I make of why it is a Christmas movie. But I mean, I agree. Like, again, there's no right or wrong answer to this question. But like I said, I wanted to get your guys perspective on this. Tony being kind of the uh, referee here in the conversation. But Dutch, yeah, Dutch is that too. Or, or it's a guy getting his son or his stepson home for the holidays. Is True. that a Thanksgiving movie or is that a Christmas movie? Well, I'm not sure, but that was, a, I was going to bring that up. You know, we've been talking about John Candy for the past half hour. I can't believe not one, not one of us uh, shout out plane trains, automobiles or. Well, that's because it's a Thanksgiving film. I was but saying, yes. Are we it, counting that as Thanksgiving then? Is that why yeah. it's not being counted in the hot, in the yeah. Christmas I mean, Del yeah, I mean, Home John, for the Holidays yeah. then would be my favorite, but like mm -hmm. that's a Thanksgiving movie. It's right, okay. explicitly Thanksgiving. Yeah, Dutch, trains, planes, and and Home for the Holidays are all Thanksgiving. Okay, films. so that we that's for that's for the Taft Thanksgiving uh, special, not the right. Christmas one. <laughs> and I, think, I think Tony will have to head that one up because he loves he loves the. Thanksgiving. I would love you guys do like a play on planes, trains, automobiles, but with Taft, <laughs> that would be awesome. I think that I think you guys got a story sitting right there. I've thought about yeah. it. That'd be a nice thirty sure pager. You know? That that could be a, yeah, a nice thirty pager. That could be something. Ooh, yeah. okay, okay. Well, so that leads us. We gotta perfectly... get through this one first. Yeah, I yeah. say get through the get through <laughs> Christmas first, and then we'll talk yeah. about the other holidays. But. Yeah. That leads in perfectly. I mean, we're coming close to the end of the interview, and I got to ask, like I said, I can't sing the praise of this book enough. I really loved it. Even though I've only read the first 20 pages of this holiday special, I, you guys have just enthralled me with the world of Taff. Taff is a character, the supporting cast. I'm all in on this. And so I have to ask, like you said, we're focused on Holiday in the Stars right now, getting that, getting that going, getting it finished. Mm -hmm. But... I'm sure you guys have thought about this and you were just saying, you know, you thought about the plane trains automobiles thing. What's the future looking like uh, for Taft? Is there a future for Taft? I'm, I know there's more stories to be told, but will those are, is there plans for those stories to start being crafted? Or again, you just purely focused on holiday and the stars, man. I haven't slept in a month. <laughs> He's like, dude, I'm just trying to get through yeah, this, man. <laughs> I haven't even slept at all. I've been working all night. This is you yeah. got me up 24 hours a day right now. I'm, yeah. oh, 
I'm not a morning um, person, so. <laughs> yeah, so you got Tony at a good time. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. No, like, uh, you know, this has been this this has been a year of the making. Like, mm -hmm. uh, Tony and I going back and forth trying to craft this this uh, this holiday story that isn't Die Hard, mm -hmm. um, because that was the thing that I was worried about as well as making this a Die Hard story and being like, it just takes place during Christmas. <laughs> this is a, but it is. But I, you know, that trying to make this book the best that it can be is what has been on my mind 100 percent and i do not have the luxury to work on multiple things at the same time whether that's emotionally or mentally or physically and i've been you know this is this is what i've been doing and trying to manage this and so i would love to tell more tapster stories and yeah you know we have we you know i have notebooks filled with all sorts of fun ideas that we can definitely like we will definitely explore in the near future, mm. but for now, like getting this 140 pages out, um, getting this to be one of like the best looking books that we've produced and, uh, and hopefully getting this funded is, is, is really my goal. And like, and it does, it's taxing, you know, uh, we have, we have great people on our side, you know, I've got Tony by my side, but we have, you know, Taylor Esposito, we've got Simon Golf, we've got, Guillermo Mendez, we've got Jimmy George, we've got Rafer Roberts, and we got Blake mm -hmm. um, from Blake's Blood. Blake's Buzz. Shout Blake out Morgan, Blake, right? we love Blake over Shout here. Out Buzz, Blake. Buzz, baby. Shout out to Blake, and like these people are are carrying me throughout this this whole season because I am I am tired, mm -hmm. and uh, they are good good folks, and they are doing good good work, and I I couldn't be more proud, and uh, I can't wait to make more books with these people but as of now i i have to finish this first and then and blinders then I, on. The, I i do mm -hmm. i've got my reindeer blinders on man yeah, i'm hey. fucking rudolph <laughs> cut, cutting through this this porridge this porridge <laughs> fog my friend oh i love it i love it and like i said i i i know there's more stories to be told and i'm excited to see those stories but Yes. I'm ready for this story to get out to the fans. I want to read, like I said, I've only read the first 20 pages. I want to read the other 120 of them. So <clears throat> I'm super excited for this. Again, everyone watching, listening to this, go back Taft Sturgeon Holiday in the Stars on Kickstarter right now. I'm going to have the link in the description on this video. So you don't even got to leave here. Go right under there. Go right to the Kickstarter page. And I mean, I... I could talk to you guys about this stuff all day. It's been just an absolute pleasure having you guys here and nerding out with you guys all about this stuff. But at this point, I want to push it off to you guys real quick. I know we just said, you know, you got the blinders on for tap. Do that. So that's what we're working on. But as far as, you know, socials, where can the people find you? What you guys got going on? Let them know, Tony. Uh, you can find me uh, on Twitter at Tony Gregori, uh, G-R-E-G-O-R-I. It's T O N Y, not not T O N I. Um, and uh, on <laughs> Blue Sky, it's the same Tony Gregory. Uh, same with Tumblr. I have a Tumblr. You can find it through my Twitter or my Instagram. And my bio has my Tumblr. And also, my Instagram is Tony Gregory, but it's spelled T O E K N E E. So like your toe and your knee. So Tony uh, Gregory. <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah, I'm working on. Uh, I just finished a, a comic. Uh, a uh, short story uh, for co-written by Powerhouse Hobbs of AEW, a wrestler, the pro wrestler. Yes, and, I saw um, your, some of your pencils for that, by the way, which looks thanks. absolutely yeah. awesome. And I'm drawing, uh, right now, I was, I was up all night, I'm drawing uh, a comic for a licensed property. Uh, <laughs> so it's uh, rhymes with... No, uh, no, no. <laughs> yeah, never mind, I won't say it. But yeah, I'm, I'm drawing a license. <laughs> so I won't say it. I'm doing a cover for uh, uh, Moist Critical's comic God Slap. I'm doing a uh, oh a cover for that. Nice, yeah. Yeah. nice, hell yeah, Tony. Let's go, yeah. baby. the yeah. The Taft train is full steam ahead, my dudes, and these guys are killing it. And I am so excited to see mm -hmm. everything else you guys got in the store. And like I said, I'm super excited to get Holiday in the Stars in my hands when it comes out finally. 
And again, I just, I've had so much fun talking to you guys. I wish we could stay here all day, talk about Christmas, mythology, comics, all that stuff. But I know you guys are busy and you guys got to get out of here. So unfortunately, that's going to be all that we have for you guys today. Again, I want to thank you guys for taking the time out of your busy schedule to come nerd out with me. If you guys enjoyed this episode, leave us a like, uh, consider subscribing. We got a lot of other cool stuff for you. Also, before we get out of here, I do have to remind you all, we are uh, currently doing a Christmas fundraiser called uh, Comics for a Clause. Uh, We partnered up with the Children's Hospital Los Angeles here in order to get comics into the hands of patients at the hospital. So I will also have the links to that, the donation page, as well as our Amazon wish list in the description. If you guys are able, we would love it if you guys would be able to support this cause. And also, if you guys head over to BCW and use code Sons of Millionaire, you guys can get 10% off of all your comic needs, boxes, bags, boards, oh, anything snap. you need to collect. We got I you need, covered. I need T-mailers. Hey, mm-hmm. I got you, brother. 10% <laughs> off. You got it. Uh, <laughs> hell yeah. And again, thank you guys so much. Everyone watching and listening, thank you for ner- nerding not with us this week. I hope all your stacks are fat. I hope you stay hydrated. And we will see you all next time. Fat stacks, fat it's... Wednesday stacks, baby. Ooh, Come on. Fat... I'm gonna do this all day. <laughs> <laughs>